بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة الأبدية على أعدائهم أجمعين لا قيام يوم الدين السلام عليكم my sons and daughters ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله today we are going to take a course or start a course which is called Reverses of Law <coughs> we have done this course previously part one and part two and for this batch, inshallah, once we are done with part three, we are going to start part one and then part two. Because uh, we have taken the ayat from the, from the Quran. Uh, so it's, it, it's not like a, it has to be part one, part two, part three sequence. You can take part two independently. You can take part three. So it goes like that. Now, the book which I have used is uh, ayat from, uh, is this one. But you, you don't have to do the whole thing together because these are like two thick ones. Ayat uh, al-Ahkam, you can see, by Sheikh Ayrawani, Ayatollah Ayrawani. And he is uh, this, one of the top students of Sayyid Sistani Damadullo. And uh, he has made this book for the introductory level where teenagers who have some background of house studies, they can study youth they have backgrounds of supposed studies they can study just to let you know that um, the the amount of the, the the pages which we have is about 600 pages so in part one part two part three we give you we take some of the practical ayat some of the ayat which are practical in our life in our salat in our things and then once you understand the analysis you will be able to understand this these two books so we, we we teach you how to understand these books by taking 30 examples of this book so hopefully inshallah you will benefit from them uh, it is all for teenagers and for youth and it will be in english and um, as i mentioned i have taught this uh, part one and part two so this is part three <clears throat> uh, so those who uh, who are coming for the first time Ayat are the uh, verses of Quran. Ahkam means laws. So, um, fiqh, fiqhi laws. Now, many times our youngsters, they ask, what is the source of the marja when he gives this fatwa? What is the source of this marja? What is the source of that marja? So the ayat are sources of fatwa. We know our fatwa is derived either from the Quran or either from the hadith. Now, uh, there is a difference among the scholars, how many ayat are there? We took this in part one, some said 600, some said 500, some said every single ayat who, which can be used to derive uh, a rule directly or indirectly, we call it ayatul hukum, ayatul hukum, yani verse of law. So ayatul ahkam, verses of law. So this is the plural, plural of it. And from this, uh, uh, this, this course, you also can understand, like some of our Muslim fellows, they do things a little bit differently. They do wudu differently. They do salat a bit differently. Uh, like few differences, not so many big differences. Like our Sunni fellows, they do the wudu like this side. We do the wudu like this, for example. They wash uh, sometimes their, their head. We wipe our head. Uh, even though it is white, but sometimes it looks like washing the head. So therefore, <clears throat> I know I don't know who is uh, admit admitting the students because uh, there needs to be a co-host who should ad admit the students. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. I'm trying to um, make sure that they come in, but okay. sometimes they have some problems, perhaps on their side to to go okay. in. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jazakumullah. So basically. Uh, so, so, so the differences, it, the ayat is one. Why our Sunni fellows, they took a direction and they wash like this. And why we Shias wash like this? These are some of the answers we can get from this course. Why is zakat issue? Zakat, why Shias, they have a few, little bit few differences in ruling than our Sunni fellows. Why Khums, for example, Quran talks about Khums, Quran talks about zakat. So, this course allows us to also understand a different perspective 
or different perspective uh, from other uh, uh, schools of thought. So uh, I don't want to take too much time in introduction. Uh, inshallah, when we take part one, I'll give more of the introduction. So today we are going to take Ayatul Wudu. It's a very important ayat. So basically, this is verses of law. Uh, part three, because we have part one, part two already given. And online, if the new batch, after we are done with part three, we are going to start part one back again for those who have not taken. So, and and I have summarized some of the areas where, which were very big to, uh, to be suitable for the beginners in this uh, course. So Ayat al-Wudu. <clears throat> I want you to follow with me. So what the way we will do is, we will try to go through this ayat, ayatul wudu, together, okay, word by word, and then divide this ayat into several groups. And then we discuss each single area of this ayat, okay? And then uh, after that, we see uh, the notes of ayatullah baqil ayrawani in this, okay? So now we have, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the mu'mineen. Now remember, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, that means, O oh, ye who believe, O oh, ye who are faithful, O oh, the believers, O oh, the faithful. So we understand that mu'min word, mu'min has two meanings. One is Muslim in general. And one is very specific, God-loving, God-cautious, uh, uh, that pious, very uh, pious, uh, strictly pious mu'min. That means he never ever thinks of committing haram. Whenever shaitan comes to his mind, brings haram, he does not, uh, he avoids it. No, I love God. I will never ever think about anything which displeases God. I will never. So that is the, the true mu'min. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended that true mu'min or just any Muslim. So when we look at the ayat of uh, fasting, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam. Fasting has been prescribed upon you. That means upon you all Muslims. So that means Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu means O oh, Muslims. Okay, this is number one. So what we understand from this ayat, Salat is obligatory on every Muslim, not only on that specific mu'min. No, every single Muslim. If you embrace Islam, Salat is wajib upon you. Salat is the pillar of your religion. If you leave the Salat, you have left the religion. If you have sloppiness in your Salat, you have sloppiness in your religion. So that's why it is very important for us to know that Salat is wajib. And it is a pillar of Islam. How many pillars of Islam are there? Five. Salat, Zakat, fasting, Hajj. So what is the fifth one? Fifth one, the Sunnis and Shias, they differ. The Sunnis, they say recitation of Kalma. Uh, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Our Imams, they say no. Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu say no. It is the authority accepting the authority of Allah, accepting the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, accepting the authorities of imams, appointed imam, infallible imams after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These three authorities has been mentioned in the Quran in ayat when Imam Ali gave his ring while he was in the position of ruku. Good. So now we have this Ya uh, amanu, O Muslims, that means all those who are holding faith, believers. salat. So if you come to one of the one of the pillars of Islam, I mentioned five pillars of Islam. Four we agree with our Sunni fellows. The fifth wilayat is a very specific and very peculiar term, uh, strengthening the whole system of Islam, the authority. If you are going to offer salat. Okay, so this is if. That means we are expecting 
that if, if we are going to offer salah, then Ya Allah, what should we do? What is next? What are we supposed to do next? Allah says, okay. So when you are ready to offer salat, what would you do? Faghsilu wujuhakum. Number one. Now, please, to understand this ayat, focus with me with the words and its meanings. Okay? And look at the sequence. So what you are going to look in ayat al-wudu, two things. The meaning and the sequence of acts. Faghsilu. Wash. So ayat is talking about two things. Faghsilu wamsahu. Wash and wipe. So there are two things in the wudu. There are things they need to be washed. There are things they need to be wiped. Good. We move on. We move on. So question, Ya Allah, what should we wash? What should we wipe? Allah says, no problem. Read the Quran. Wash your face. وَأَيْدِيكُمْ Your hands. إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ Until the elbows. Okay, until here. So, so that means I have to wash my face. Allah did not put the limit for the face. And my hands. Allah kept the limit for the hand. Mirfa. Don't wash it until here. Wash it until here. Okay? So this is the limit. Now how to wash it? Our Sunni fellows, they say, wash it like this. Shia says, wash it like this. We will see why do Shia take like this. Okay? Like this. Okay? So now we have limit of the hand. Good. Anything else, Ya Allah, should we wash? No, khalas. Wash your face. Wash your hands until the elbow. Wonderful. Then what else, Ya Allah? Wamsahu. Wipe. Okay. Biru usikum. Wa arju. Wa arjulikum. Biru usikum. Wa arjulakum. So some recited wa arjulakum. Some recited wa arjulikum. And that is why some Muslims, they wash their feet. Some Muslims, they wipe their feet. We are going to come that dis to that discussion as well. Why our Sunni fellows, they wash their feet? Why the Shias, they wipe their feet? Because of the grammatical structure of arjulikum and arjulakum. Okay? So we have, what are the things to be wiped? Wamsahu biru'usikum. Ba is like part. So part of your head. So if I do like this, I wipe my head. If I do like this, I wipe my head. If I do like this, do like this. One finger amount is enough. If somebody sees, oh, this guy wiped, wiped his head, finished. Yes, it, the, the recommendations I'm not mentioning now, it's recommended to wipe with three fingers. That's recommended. But if you wipe with one finger, that's maraja. From where do the maraja, they say it is enough? Because Allah says wipe. Allah did not say how many fingers. So as long as you did something which is considered wipe, that's done. Okay. Now I'm going to read the Shia version and then afterwards we are going to read the Sunni version to understand the difference between Shia and Sunni. And it, 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 they took from the Quran, we took from the Quran. But we took our explanation from Imams of Ahlul Bayt, from Hadith of Imam al-Baqir They took their explanation from the Sahabas like Abu Huraira and others. So that's where the difference happened. Their interpretation is taken from Sahabas. Our interpretation is taken from Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. So now, وَمْسَحُ Wipe part of your head. وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ So, uh, uh, you wiping the feet, it's, 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 it's just if you do like this, finish. Or do like this, finish with one finger. Yes, it's recommended more. But if you do like this, th did you wipe? Yes, this guy wiped. That is it. That's it. So uh, this is what we are uh, supposed to understand from this ayat that Now arjulakum, I'm going to come to that point. That's one of the discussions in here. But let me finish the introduction. And I already mentioned that there is two directions. The Shia direction, the Sunni direction. 
And these are few differences, you see, as I mentioned, there's not huge difference between the Shias and Sunnis. Okay, here, wudu is done. This ayat from here till here has given the wudu. Bas, khalas? Yes. There's one line wudu in the Quran. فَاغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ وَامْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ Okay, so إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ Ka'bain is, the, you know, the, the, the bulge area on the side. So that means when you draw a line from here to here, and this is your feet. So until, until here, until the, the ankle, okay, is your masah area. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defined the limit of the masah area. Some they say Ka'b is the, the bulged area on here. So more shorter, more shorter area. Uh, so because there's this one bulged here, two bulged aside. We are going to discuss that as well. So basically, if we take this bulge, that means just until here, uh, one finger amount of masah is, uh, is sufficient. So Allah defined the Ka'ab and Allah defined the elbow. These are the two definitions Allah has defined in Ayat of wudu. Then what is next? We see two, three lines. Yes, that's another topic. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa in kuntum junuban. <clears throat> Junub janaba means if somebody uh, has done private relations with his wife, or somebody saw wet dream, uh, which made him uh, najis. There are there are youth, they see wet dream and they become najis. And that's the sign where they reach the age of adolescence. They become balig. Okay. So those who are balig, they understand what I'm talking about. So when they sleep, they wake up, they say, whoops, there's najasat there. So now they have to do the ghusl, the ceremonial bath. Wash your head and neck and then wash your body. Uh, it is recommended that you wash the right side before the left hand side. So many youngsters, many youth, they ask about how can we perform ghusl of janabat, ghusl after the uh, sexual defilement. So it is easy, just remove the najasat from your body parts, okay? Then start washing the head. So once you have washed the head and the neck with the intention, I'm, I'm performing ghusl of janabat, uh, as an obligatory act upon me to achieve the nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, ta so wash your head, every single, like every area, try to see that water reaches. Okay, that's done. What about the body? The body, just, but, but when you're washing the body, don't let the water come on your head. Move your head like that, so the water comes like that. And it's better to use that shower, telephone shower, they call it, you see. So you don't put like this when you're putting uh, washing body. You put your, your, sh your shower on the, on the body. So you're washing the body. Uh, say the sister and he says, wash the body is fine. It's recommended. First, you wash the right side of the body. And then you wash the left side of the body from top to bottom. So first, you wash the right side of the body from here till all the way uh, to the feet from front and back. And then you wash the left side of the body from here till all the way down to the feet, uh, front and back. And it is better not to just draw a line. You say like, uh, where is this pen? I'm going to draw a line, middle line. Oh, Sheikh said right side and left side. No, 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 no. <laughs> you bring a little bit of left when you wash, wash right and bring a little bit of right when you wash left. You don't have to bring a scale and before Ghusl Janaba, you draw a line, a midline. Okay, this is where my midline starts. No, you, you don't have to do that. Okay, just wash the body. It's recommended to wash right first and then left. I see some maraja, they say it's obligatory precaution. Check your marja. Um, and when you, when you decide to wash right and left first, right, take apart from left. When you're washing left, take apart from right. Okay, this is called ghusl janab. So what is Allah trying to say here? وَإِن كُنْتُمْ جُنُبًا If you become sexually defiled, you enter the state of Janaba. فَتَّهَّرُوا Ah, there's another, another obligatory rule here. Allah says, purify yourself. Okay? Before Salat, 
because the whole idea is uh, remember Allah started the whole thing when you start for your prayer so these things are obligatory for prayer but if let's say if you want to go to your your school university job and you don't have time to do ghusl that's fine you don't have to as long as you have prayed your fajr but then when you come back you will have to uh, you will have to do the ghusl for salat al dhuhr and asr okay so good wa in kuntum junuban fattahharu here here also second rule finish so how many rule we have now so far done? Rule number one, ghusl. I mean, wudu. Wash your face and hand, wipe your head and feet. Then, janaba, fattaharu. In two words, Allah has said, if you are in that state of janaba, purify yourself. Allah did not say with water or with tayammum. No, it is understood from the hadith. It is through use of water. Okay? through use of water then what else ya allah then the extra uh, rules which are exceptional cases circumstances like for example people who cannot use water so what is for them ya allah if you were sick sick not any sick oh ya fushil ya no sickness that the water ha would harm you because we are talking about wudu and ghusl water water so the exceptional case is coming where this is how we analyze the ayat of the quran so we spoke about water we spoke about water now we have an exceptional case which is sickness sickness that does not permit you to use water oh ala safarin you are traveling those days people they used to travel they will have short little bit amount of water they would use it to drink you see for their animal so you can't use your drinking water uh, in the desert or your animal's water no 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 i'm super spiritual guy a uh, hyperbolic spirituality no i'll use the water and then god will send rain god will not send rain and you'll die with your camel or horse and you yourself so just use your reason intellect because god says use your intellect and reason and then he will send rain as well, inshallah. But don't act like uh, without intellect and become too super spiritually guy. You, um, so, so you are traveling, your water is not enough to, to okay. So sickness, traveling. Now Allah mentioned two excuses which prevents a person from using water. Here is a very technical point. I want you to focus on this. Very beautiful and technical point. So God mentioned two excuses. Sickness and traveling, which in a enables you to use water. Then when, Ya Allah, should I use the tayammum uh, for wudu or should I use tayammum for ghusl? Allah says both of them. How? So Allah gave us two examples. Oh, example number one. If someone comes out of toilet, okay, restroom, that means he has urinated or he has done the number two, as they say. So you came out of the bathroom, okay, that means you are either you have number one or number two. In both cases, uh, you will have to clean yourself and you will have to do wudu. But I don't have water. What should I do? then do tayammum so tayammum instead of wudu tayammum instead of wudu but why did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention ghusl the second example so allah gave one example where you need to do wudu because you need to do wudu on five things on passing urine passing stool passing gas uh, passing out like knocking down okay lose your conscience uh, anything which loses your mind, alcohol, uh, drugs, intoxicating, anything. If your mind is lost, your wudu is invalid. Okay? Your wudu becomes invalid. So, and then, uh, so even sleeping. Sleeping, sometimes, you know, when when in the holy month of Ramadan, especially if I'm giving khutbah Jum'ah, uh, there are people...
and I'm watching like someone will not hear, sir, because I have the whole bird's eye view in front of me. So I say, that guy nods, then that guy nods. That guy nods, that guy nods. So, like, you know, that game of like, <laughs> so, so, so you have to keep your eye. Uh, so now the nodding, it does not invalidate your wudu. In case if you are sitting in front of me in Juma Namaz and you did like that, it does not invalidate your wudu. The what does? It, as long as you are hearing the khutbah, khatib, okay? Uh, as long as your eyes close, but you know somebody's talking. So you are okay. The moment the talk disappears <clears throat> and you can't hear the talk, that's when the, the you need to do go and go and do your wudu in, in the ablution area. Okay. So this is why uh, we say that um, um, when somebody is in a Friday prayer and ju khutbah juma is uh, Luckily, Ayatollah Sistani Damadullah has restricted the Qutbah Jummah to short. Don't make it more than 40 minutes or something like that. So, <clears throat> so but in our, our generations previously, mashallah, the Maulana would enjoy the Qutbah Jummah would be the because everybody will come to Salat al Jum'ah. And that would be his opportunity to, to just, just finish whole Islam on their, download it in their minds. But uh, so, so therefore, if you, if you nod like that, that does not invalidate your wudu. If you lose your hearing, then what if I don't know? Did I lose or not? We'll say no. That means your wudu is okay. Okay? Don't remove your wudu unless you are sure. So you are sure that you lost your, your, your hearing completely. Your eyes might have been closed, but still you are hearing the khutbah. The, the guy, the maulana is talking. So, so that is five invalidators of wudu. One of them Allah mentioned, or let's say two. He said, whoever comes out of the restroom, that means he's in the state of uh, either he has passed urine or either he has passed a stool, number one, number two, or maybe he might have passed gas because sometimes people, they have gas, they're embarrassed. They just go quickly in the bathroom and they come out. You say, oh, did, are you Superman? You went quickly in the bathroom and came out. What did you do there? Uh, so, so then some people smart they realize oh this guy went just to uh, pass his wind or something break the wind or something like that or to smash the wind so you just go quickly and come out no next time if you want to break a wind <laughs> just open the faucet or do something and come out so not to let the people be suspicious about about you it's like not going to the bathroom it's like you were there so just do something so they know that, no, you went to wash your hands or something like that. Anyhow, that's your technical problem. So, so three, you might have done one of these three things when you came out of the <clears throat> toilet. So that those are invalidators of wudu. But where is Allah talking about invalidators of ghusl? That means you did something which uh, invalidates the ghusl. Awla mastumun nisa. If you touched women, here we have a big difference between the school of companion and school of Ahlul Bayt Ali Musra. School of companion, they say, if you touch the woman, you need to purify yourself. That is why they say we cannot shake hands. The Sunni fellows, they say we cannot shake hands with women. Mujarrad, the moment you shake hand with women, kaboom, the wudu explodes and blows. Oh, now I have to go do my wudu. Let's say you're going to the masjid and um, for, 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 for them, it is not haram to salam on, uh, give, shake hands. Some of them, they say also, uh, they are same like Shias, but some of the Sunni uh, fellows, they say, no, uh, it's not haram. It just invalidates the wudu. So you, you are going to the masjid and then suddenly your amma or your anyone came uh, from your relatives or something like that and she shook hand with you. Whoops, daisy, the wudu broke. Now you have to do the wudu. So that's this, the uh, interpretation of the Sunni school of thought. And we are going to discuss further on this. The school of Ahlul Bayt, however, <clears throat> they say no. This touching is the, uh, the private relations with a woman not just touching a woman, no. Touching a woman does not invalidate your wudu in school of Ahlul Bayt, but it is haram if they are not related to you, okay? In school of Ahlul Bayt, why shaking hands, men and women? We don't say touching women, no. 
men touching women, women touching men. It's like equality kind of thing. They both can't touch each other unless they are married with each other or related with blood, blood relatives, like brother, uncle, uh, paternal uncle, paternal, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, maternal uncle, uh, or she's your paternal aunt or maternal aunt. That means blood relative, amma, khala, jadd, bint, zawja. These, these are the uh, people who can, you can shake hands with you, uh, uh, each other and touch each other. But other than that, it's touching is forbidden. But wudu, nothing happens to your wudu in school of Ahlul Bayt. Why? Because this word la mastum, it looks like touch. But the, the, the Ahlul Bayt explained it, it is more than touch. This Allah wanted to be a bit polite. So did not mention heavy duty words here. Okay, he just mentioned this and Ahlul Bayt explained that this is the private relations. That means Janaba. That means you need to do ghusl. Okay, so Allah gave one example of wudu coming out of toilet, one example of ghusl uh, touching the woman. That means having private relations. We are going to discuss this further because Quran has spoke like about Maryam alayhi salatu islam. She says, how can I carry a child where no man has touched me okay these polite words they are used and not instead of heavy duty words to respect the woman and to respect the communication with women so that is the whole idea behind these kind of words used okay good alhamdulillah so now we have two examples again if you are not able to use water because you are either sick or either traveling, inability to use water because the water was short or water was harmful. Okay, but what? Instead of wudu tayammum or instead of ghusl? Both. So don't do wudu, don't do ghusl if you have shortage of water or if you are sick. So how can we understand? Allah gave an example of wudu. Somebody comes out of the restroom, toilet, after one of those three things we said, or you touched specific touching of the woman. And you don't have water. Tajidu means we have shortage of water or according to the explanations of Aima, that no, you are, the water is there, but the time is short. Time is not enough or the water is there, but there is sickness, you can't use water. So how? Like for example, you wake up for, uh, in the morning <clears throat> and there is state of janaba or you want to do wudu, but the time is very short and the sun will rise. You know, if you are going to go to the toilet or go wherever the, the water is, it's going to take time and the sun will rise. Do not make your salat qada. But I can't do wudu. I'm going to do, do wudu. The sun will rise. Do tayammum. Do tayammum. Finish. But the water is there. Yes. But the time is not sufficient. So tayammum is when water is there, but time is not sufficient. Water is there, but health does not allow you to use water. Water is not there. And the time will go away. In these three cases, tayammum becomes obligatory. On. And obviously, these three cases have been broken down into the book of law into nine cases, eight cases. But the, all those eight cases and nine cases, they pour down into these three reasons. Remember them. Lack of water. Pro health problem. Or shortage of time. If you use water, salah will become qada. Don't make your salah qada out of time. Okay, good, Ya Allah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much, Ya Allah, for telling us. فَتَيَمَّمُ سَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا So perform tayammum. سَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا We are going to explain it. So from, from the higher ground. غَائِط is lower ground. So these are two synonyms used in this ayat. غَائِط uh, Normally those days, they did not have toilets. So they will come to the lower grounds where there are trees, where there are mountains, valleys. They will go all the way down lower and then they will dig a pit 
and then they will do their toilet there. That was all day. So, so ghaet means a lower ground. Sa'id means upper ground. Ghaet, lower. Sa'id, upper. So Allah says, if you do tayammum, don't do from lower ground. Your head, hand might become messed up with even whatever stuff is there. Okay? Take, choose. Because crazy person will go on the higher ground and use toilet there so everybody can watch the cinema. So, okay, this guy doesn't have his mind with him. So, so, so normally, higher ground are clean ground. Because when the rain falls, the rain falls and cleans it. The uh, in and intellectual people, they don't go on the top of the ground and, and in front of everybody, they do their toilet. Okay? So do tayammum from pure sand, pure dust, which is found in the higher grounds. فَمْسَحُوا بِوُجُوهِكُمْ Then Allah finally tells us the method of tayammum. فَمْسَحُوا do masah بِوُجُوهِكُمْ That means not the whole face, part of this face. Like you start from here. Only this area. So you, you bring your hand down until here okay that's it no need for putting dust on my face no 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 need to put like that and then hand take off the rings every ring should come out this is not coming out i'll pretend that it's out okay and then you can use soap and uh, whatever things but uh, here at this point this is not coming out so you will you will you will wipe, wipe your hand from here okay and don't do like this. Include your thumb in it. Okay? Don't look at this ring. This ring is gone. Pretend it's not there. It's not coming out. Okay, I'll use this one. Okay? That's it. Allah says, فَمْسَعُ بِوُجُوهِكُمْ Part of your face. Bi ba is part. بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ Remember مَسَحْ ba بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ In the ayat. This is be wujuhikum, not the whole part of the face. Okay? Wa aidikum and your hands. Not necessarily the entire hand. What else? So hand could be from here to here, hand could be from here to here, hand could be from here to here. Okay, all this is hand. So in wudu, hand is until here. In tayammum, according to the hadith, hand is until here. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's see what's left. <clears throat> so, Ya Allah, thank you so much for telling us the ghusl. فَغْسِلُوا And then, فَتَّهَّرُوا for janaba, And then, uh, this ayat, if you want to follow, it's in Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayat number 6. And then, Allah gave us the method of what? تَيَمَّمْ فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا فَمْسَحُوا بِوُجُوهِكُمْ Minhu? So, okay. So part of the hand, part of the face, part of the hand. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the philosophy of this rule. Why, Ya Allah? Why? I just just face and just this much? Not like the whole body. But for Janaba, I have to wash the whole body. There was a guy, he came to my teacher. Rahmatullah Ali. He, uh, uh, my teacher asked him, do you know how to do ghusl? He said, yes, wash your head and neck and then right hand side and left hand side, the body. Okay, let's say if you don't have water, how would you do the ghusl? I mean, the tayammum for, instead of ghusl. So he started taking the dust and he started putting on on his body. He said, whoa, 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 slow down because it was in desert, you see. And my teacher said, show me how you do tayammum in replacement for ghusl. So he started taking dust and shows the, the teacher said, no. He said, not the whole body, only this and this. That's tayammum. But that's for wudu. No, for wudu and ghusl, same tayammum. For wudu and ghusl, same tayammum. No difference. Okay? فَتَيَمَّمُوا سَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا So Allah says, People would ask, why just like this small forehead and just hands? Allah says, Ma yuridu Allah min haraj. 
Allah doesn't want to make difficulty and hardship for you. Allah wants to make things easy for you. Where you will put all the dust on your body and then <laughs> you'll become worse than, than uh, what uh, the, the filth which was before there. Walakin, but what is the idea? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to purify you. Walakin yuridu liyutahhirakum. وَلْيُتِمَّ نَعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكُمْ Purification is the best blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the humanity, specifically on Muslim. One guy in the United States embraced Islam. They told him, why did you embrace Islam? He said, because of the purification. I have not seen a religion emphasized on purification on daily basis. Five times purify, purify, purify. If you know water, then to do, do the dirt. I mean the sand, purify with sand, but purify. Do not leave the purification out of your life. He said, I was impressed with the concept of purification, external purification, internal purification. So that is why he was very much impressed by Islam and embraced Islam. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ so that you may be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you realize this is great bounty that you are given opportunity to purify, then you will be thankful to Allah. Thank you, Ya Allah. You gave me the blessing of purification. So the introduction of ayat done. Now we start taking discussion. And as I said that this session is 50 minutes. Okay. Uh, so, but today, since it's the first day, I'm going to just talk a little bit about uh, uh, Sheikh Al Airawani's uh, uh, words, and then we will give you a quiz. Remember, I'm going to give you a pop quiz. There will be five questions, true and false. So please send it to me on my WhatsApp, okay? The true answers, and we are going to put this as your assessment, inshallah. Before I continue, is there any question here? <coughs> Okay. Okay, I can't see any questions here. Let me see if uh, there is. Uh... Okay, can you take a normal bath with the intention of it? No, normal bath is different. We said ghusl is a religious bath. Okay, so you wash your head and neck and make intention. Ya Allah, I am performing Ghusl al uh, to achieve the nearness of you for Adli Nerman stay till day or till good. So then first head and neck together. And then after that, as I said, move your head, let the water pour on your body. Move your head, let the water pour on your body. So when you are washing the body, don't let the don't wash your head with it, okay? Move your head aside, this side, and move your head aside. If a little bit water goes on your head, don't worry about it. But don't let the washing of the body be with the head because the, the Islamic teachings have told us, cut it off, like head and this, done. Now I'm washing the body. Water is pouring on my head, but yeah, that's fine. Not too much. Most of the water is coming on my body, okay? So that's... Uh, that's one uh, uh, will we yes we are going to uh, go with the sunni why do they wash their feet it's all about uh, we, we have a discussion that's why we are studying ayatul wudu uh, who, who else said can a uh, normal bath no it has to be ghusl janaba head and neck and then after that the body with the intention uh, oh yeah the answers you will have to send it here Okay, so let me just uh, uh, go through Sheikh Bakr Airawani's uh, words in his book. Uh, a book is in Arabic, so I had uh, made a summary of it in English. So let's check this out and let me know if there's something not understood here. The ayat addresses the believers. Ya amanu. The ayat makes the purification as a prerequisite. Condition for salat. So salat without wudu or without ghusl is batil, invalid. So make sure that you do the wudu properly and you do, uh, if you are in a defilement state, 
then touching kind of thing, then do the ghusl. The ayat explains what is obligatory parts to washes, wash the face and hands, to wipes, wipe the head and feet, according to the school of Ahlul Bayt. The ayat defines the limit of the hand, okay, which must be washed as to the elbow. The ayat defines the feet. Remember that bulgy area on the feet uh, when we are going to wipe it as to the ankles. The ayat indicates the head should be partially wiped due to the existence of ba beru usikum. One needs to wipe the whole head. Uh, one do, I'm sorry. One needs not to wipe the whole head, but part of the head. Good. So sequence of wudu, the ayat indicates the obligation of the sequence. Since ayat says first the face, then the hand, that means face needs to be first. So the sequence, the tartib is there in the ayat. So somebody asks you, why you guys are washing the face before the hand? Because Quran says so. First the face. Then wa'aydiyakum. So first the face, then the hands, arms. Okay? So and washing the arms, then wiping the head, wiping the feet. The ayat indicates that if a person was in the state of janaba, then he, she must purify themselves. And um, it does not mention any further detail. So where do we get the further detail? From the hadith, from the hadith, from the narrations. If you see the Maraja, Sidi Sistani gives you extra information from what we did. That is from the hadith. So our courses, verses of law. So we take the ayat and see what are the probabilities in the ayat. Then our maraja, they take from the hadith and fix it. <laughs> Substitute purification. The ayat indicates that if a person was unable to purify with water due to the sickness, marva, uh, water would harm, or traveling, ala safar, or if a person uh, emptied his bowel, okay, or if a person had touching, that specific touching we mentioned, then from the water, the responsibility, the answering, the obligation shifts to the sand purification, tayammum. Okay? The ayat does not indicate the method to use while performing evolution with tayammum. The ayat says only head, part of the face, and uh, 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 a part of the uh, the hands. Details are in the ahadi. It only indicates that the dirt is used for ablation should be from upper lands, Sa'id, we said, and often uh, uh, and, and not the lower lands, okay, from upper lands, because lower lands were used for the restrooms. The land should not be usurped, okay, it should be permissible. Conclusion. Whatever is indicated in Islamic law regarding the details of wudu, both by water or dirt, besides what was indicated in this verse, has been derived from authentic ahadith, authentic narrations. So beside this ayat, if you see, well, Ayatollah Sistani says this, I can't find it. Well, had, that, uh, there's another course, inshallah. If we, if we are done with this, we will try the hadith al ahkam, the hadith of the laws. So the condition of water is being absolutely permissible. Uh, water should be halal, not stolen. And then the starting point of washing the hand should be from here or here. The Shias, they say, we start from here. The Sunni fellows, they say, from here. So that we are going to discuss further. Wiping the feet, one difference between Sunni and Shia. So one difference is hand, one difference is feet. Our Sunni fellows, they wash the feet, okay? And they wipe only if there was a barrier there. And then the recommendations of wudu, those are all found in the ahadith. If not wudu, then tayammum. The indication of sequence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned wudu, 
And if you're Janaba, Fattaharu Ghusl. And then if not, then Tayammum. If water is not available or not usable or for time or any other reason, go Tayammum. So indicates that uh, purification from minor defilement or minor metaphysical impurities. We call it al-hadath al-asghar. It's, it's, it's an Arabic term for minor because we have najasa two types. Small najasa, big najasa. Small najasa, like we said, uh, passing stool, passing urine, passing gas, losing your mind or sleeping, losing your, uh, uh, your hearing. So these are small defilements, small metaphysical defilement. It's not physical najasat. Hadath means metaphysical najasat. So these small najasat, they require wudu. If not, then tayammum. Big najasat, like sexual defilement, like period of woman, like post-delivery blood, when when a woman gives child birth, the blood which comes, it makes the woman in a state of defilement, metaphysical defilement, like hayd, like period. And then we have touching the dead body and the dead body itself, when the person dies, becomes najis. So that is hadathul akbar. Akbar, big najasat, means you need to do ghusl to remove it. Okay? The verse indicates purification by earth from both minor and major defilement. Okay, from Hadath al Azgar, Hadath al Akbar, if you don't have water or you're not able to use water. So, in both cases, and it's same tayammum for both, same tayammum for both. Okay, so besides mentioning the, um, uh, mentioning the defiling cause for evolution by earth, it also mentioned a cause of evolution by earth that can. Uh, also be due to the inability of using water, sickness, traveling, shortage of water. Okay, so uh, we are almost done. So the difference between ghasl and ghusl. Ghasl is washing. Ghusl is that ceremonial bath. Remember like this, like this you do. That is ghusl, u. There is u there. Ghasl is wash. Wash your face, like in wudu, we have ghasl with an a. Ah. Ghusl, ghusl is u. U means what? Ghusl, u with the u means that ceremonial bath, touching. Remember that uh, special touching. And ghasl, baghsilu, that is the, uh, the washing of the wudu. So wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make things easy to purify the body externally and aiming the internal purification. So Allah says, wash outside. But yuridu liutahirakum. So that you may be thankful. That means he wants you to pure your nafs as well so that you have the ma'rifat of Allah. And when you have the recognition and ma'rifat of Allah, you will be thankful. Remember the last beautiful word used. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Shukr. Shukr is when your nafs is purified. You become thankful servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So both external and internal purification aim towards perfection and to a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma'rifah, recognition of Allah and the blessing is completed. Allah does not want to cause hardship or difficulty. If you are sick, Allah doesn't want you to use water. Why are you harming yourself? Why are you hurting yourself? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this uh, legislation, okay, with the tayammum with it, so you can. And Allah doesn't want you to waste too much water. So ghusl should not make, take more than three k kilograms of water. Three shilo of watten. Intemir. A liter, okay. So should not ghusl should not take too much water. We, we, we some people they they do ghusl they empty the whole tank of water, and wudu should not take a, a more than cup of tea. I don't know where did my cup of tea go, go, but my cup of tea is a big cup of tea, okay, like like this one. 
this cup, this is too much. This is for two people to do wudu, not one. Okay, so half of this cup is good for wudu. Enough. They reckon half of the inner cup. They reckon for wudu. Do be over into so make a button for at your wudu. So you don't need too much water to uh, do wudu. So uh, no more dirt is required. You see, even even when you when you strike your hand with the dirt. Some ulama say, do like this, take the dust out, okay? So, so it's very less water, less water for ghusl, less water for uh, wudu, less uh, dust for tayammum. Allah wants to make things easy. So the easiness of religion, hardship and difficulty are also availed when Allah allows, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person, to, when you travel, use minimum water, okay? If you don't have use, Use the, the, the dirt. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also wants people to secure their cow, animal. No, I want to do my salat. I deserve more water than my camel. Let my camel die, but I am going to do my spirituality. Uh, that's that. We don't call it irfan. We call it khirfan in Arabic language. That's like being a sheep. or uh, Baba, these are your responsibility. Your donkey or your camel or your horse. You are responsible for giving him water. Not, water is not only for you. Also use, uh, the use of water is uh, availed when if there is an intellectual probability and not certainty. Maybe the water will become short. That's fine. You don't have to be sure. Maybe I may become sick. Fine. Do tayammum. You don't have to be sure. If there is a probability, the water will be short. The water will be harmful or the time will not be there enough, do tayammum. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin. Now, I'm going to show you the questions. Okay, so make sure that you, when you send me your answer, your name is there. It's a true and false. Just write the number on your WhatsApp, okay? Uh, and just uh, uh, click right or wrong, or T for true and F for false. Uh, or whatever language you use. Okay, so let me just read these questions. True or false? Uh, the verse of wudu indicates the following points. Ayatul wudu. Remember, there are things in the hadith, but there are things in the ayat itself. So if you find one of these things in the ayat of wudu, make tick, yes. If something is not in ayatul wudu, false. Okay? Wudu is a condition for the Salat. Wudu is a prerequisite, vilkur, condition for the Salat. Yes or no? I mean, it, did we understand that from the ayat or no? If yes, it is there in the ayat, okay, then yes. Number two, sequence of obligatory parts of Wudu, like first the face, then the hands, then wipe the head, then wipe the feet. Is that sequence of wudu there in the ayat? If yes, then yes. If no, then no. Recommended parts of wudu, like mouth washing, like uh, rinsing the nose and all this recommended. Are they in the wudu? Ayatul wudu. Sequence of the recommended parts if of the wudu, not if the wudu. So, Number three says, are recommended parts there in the wudu? Like mouthing. Number four says, sequence of that. First, you have to rinse the nose. Then you have to rinse the mouth, mouth or mouth. Or, is that sequence available in the ayat? Yes or no? Number five, sequence of the obligatory parts of the ghusl. That first, the head and neck and then the body. Is it there in the ayat? Number six, easiness of the rule of wudu and tayammum. The wudu and tayammum is Allah has made it easy. Uh, is there in the ayat or not? Okay, so if you have sent me the answers, because after I say the answers, I'll not take the answers. Okay, you want to share, you can share. Okay. 
So tell me, wudu is a condition for salat, true or false? In, is it in the ayat? I didn't hear anybody. Is it in the ayat? Yes, Mustafa, Hilal. Yes, the first condition is true. Wudu yes. is the condition of the salah. Exactly. Ida qumtum lis salat. Okay. <laughs> sequence of the obligatory parts of wudu. The sequence. Who wants to answer? Other than Hilal. Sequence of the obligatory. Are there in the Ayatul Wudu? Yes, Murtaba. Uh, yes, it's there. Yes, exactly, it's there. Number three, recommended parts of Wudu. Are they there in the Salat? I mean, in the Ayat of Wudu. Yes, Ahmed Ali. Somebody was going to speak. Yes, uh, there is not. It is not. Good. Thank you so much. Recommended parts are in the hadith. What about number four? Sequence of the recommended parts. Also in the hadith. What about sequence of the obligatory parts of the ghusl? That first the head and neck and then the body. Is it there in the ayat? Yes, Mustafa. And uh, number five is false. False. No, it is not there. Uh, Allah said, Fattaharu only. And then finally, easiness of the rule of wudu. Number six. Who wants to say this one? Yes, Mustafa. Yes, it's true. Good. Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa tayyibin al-tahirin. So inshallah, tomorrow we meet at same time and we continue our topic of Ayat al Wudu. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.